Tom Olson here from Good Success, and we are talking about the power of a mastermind. And we right now are on number five of five, so this is kind of a five-part series, and we're on number five. So I hope you've been able to listen to the previous four. So the first one, we talked about focus and getting yourself outside of your business long enough to stop working in your business and start working on your business. We talked about million-dollar ideas and all the things that you get from a mastermind from that perspective to see th- kind of other, what other people are doing and how to maybe emulate or how to um, you know copy a little bit or how to model what other people are doing to a certain degree in your own business. Uh, we also talked about um, warnings and things not to do. We talked about your network is your net worth and it's not only your net worth, it's actually your survival plan. So spending time with the fewer betters and if, if, if you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, who are you spending the most time with? Is your net worth really worth what you want it to be worth is in in, in, and a lot of times that has to do with your network so um, I believe your network is not only your net worth but it's also your survival plan and if if you have an issue if you have something that you need to be able to solve immediately or right now who are you gonna call I have found many of those people from the mastermind and being able to go to the mastermind Um, So we talk about many different things in this series, so I I hope you guys have enjoyed it and listened to it. If you guys have, please comment below and just kind of give us your thoughts on the power of the mastermind or your experience with masterminds. Um, I I run the, the, the Good Success Mastermind and I did it for purpose driven entrepreneurs that want to make a difference, that people that want to use what they have to be able to help their communities. Um, and you know, I was kind of so sick of people getting up and just pumping their chest and saying how awesome they were or going to seminars about and hearing about you know a new program or a new whatever. And those things are great, I guess, to a certain degree. But I wanted to be able to help entrepreneurs have a purpose in their life and how to um, change their direction by figuring out where they are now currently and how to get to where they want to go, you know, where they want to go and how to get there. So um, Good Success Mastermind is application only. It's at goodsuccess.com. You can you can apply there for the next mastermind and I, and I hope to see you there. But okay, so we are on um, number five of five of the power of the mastermind. And to me, I think we save the best for last. The best for last is, is the power of the mastermind. Are you ready? Here goes everybody. Drum roll. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, accountability. Um, And I believe that is the one thing. It's that discipline, that thing that you put in your life where you know you're going to have to stand in front of somebody. You you, you have a mastermind. You go and say one quarter, hey, I'm going to do this. And by next quarter, oh, this better be done. Or this whole group of super successful entrepreneurs, you know, purpose-driven business owners are going to hold me accountable. They're going to say, hey, how come that wasn't done? How come you didn't hire that integrator? How come you didn't hire that salesperson? How come you didn't um, put that system? How come you didn't write that system and, and put it in place? Um, why don't you have a finance process in place? You know, why haven't you sold those those six houses that you said you were going to sell? Why, you know, all these questions are questions that are going to be asked to you if you put yourself not only in the position of vulnerability when you go in front of the mastermind, but also in a position to be able to, for somebody else to hold you accountable. And we all need this in our life. We all need accountability. We need to be accountable to ourselves, but most of the time we aren't enough. We need to have put somebody else in that little bit of that fear, that's healthy fear that comes over us that, and we say, hey, if I don't get this done, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm gonna not live up to what I said I was gonna do. I'll give you a quick example. So we had a guy in our mastermind and he was about 380, 390. He, he was, he was, he thought to himself, man, you know, he was having problems going um, on, on an airplane and he was having, you know, he had to like, but either get two seats or you know it wasn't working out really well and he said to himself hey I have got to make this happen I've got to lose weight so he put himself out there even put himself on social media and said hey for 90 days I am going to post why I am doing this worked out two hours every single day I think he lost like 60 pounds in in, in three months and he came back at the next mastermind stronger than ever and excited about life and 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 really like it showed because he held himself accountable he put himself in front of everybody and he said, hey, I am going to do this. This shirt that I'm wearing right now is kind of one of the ways that I try to hold myself accountable. I tell everybody, hey, I have two big dreams. I want to give away a billion dollars. And number two, I want to flip the city of Gary, Indiana. And sometimes people think to themselves, oh my goodness, that's just like some gimmick he's using. But no, like we are here in Gary, Indiana, trying to make a difference, trying to use real estate to have a positive impact on the community, bringing investment into town, trying to help the citizens, give them a better lifestyle, give them 
them a better house and clean up neighborhoods that have been in shambles for a long time. Um, one of the other ways that we use to hold people accountable is this net profit workbook that Max Keller had put together. And every single month, we also get together. So not only do we get together on a quarterly basis live, but we also get together on a Zoom call every single month. And we go through these different questions together. We go over the hurdles that we're having. We go over the struggles that we're having. And we say to our, and, and we kind of go through this list of, you know, this is my plan. This is what I'm working on this quarter in order to be able to achieve my goal goal for this quarter and this if I do this it's going to make me x more money this net profit workbook I think too many people are focused on revenue and focus on how many deals they do and blah 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 but at the end of the day what are you actually doing what kind of difference are you making um, and that's all in the daily discipline that's all in somebody else holding you accountable and you putting yourself in that in that type of environment this, I believe, is one of the, the highest forms of the power of the, of the mastermind. And I believe if you don't have somebody else holding you accountable, I don't care if it's, a, if it's the Good Success Mastermind or if it's another mastermind, you've got to have somebody out there who's holding you accountable. You have to think about it. Growing up, like somebody had to hold you accountable, your parents or your teachers or, or a coach, somebody had to hold you accountable. And if they didn't, you most of the time, you weren't as successful as you would have been if you had a coach or if you had somebody holding you accountable. So this is it for the power of the mastermind today. This is the fifth of five um, of the power of the mastermind. And I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Please put your comments below and give us your experience with the power of the mastermind and with having somebody else hold you accountable. I hope you've t enjoyed today's episode. Remember to live life on purpose for a purpose, work to have to give. Mm -hmm.